Hi everybody, my name is Greg Anderson and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. So, okay, I made a video just a few days ago and I talked about the Geochron and I think I covered everything I could think of at the time about the Geochron. I thought I was done. But, of course, since then I've had some thoughts and one thing that I thought about in particular is when I was showing you all the functions and features of the Geochron, I was making extensive use of the remote control. I showed the remote control at the beginning of the video as just one of the things that comes with the Geochron Atlas 4K that I was using, but I didn't really show you what I was doing with the remote as I was showing you what the remote was doing. So, uh, I thought I would just review this real quick. Now, the remote has um, just some very simple basic buttons that you're used to if you've been using any common technology these days. This remote isn't built exclusively for the Geochron Atlas 4K, and one way you know that is that uh, a couple of the buttons on here don't really do anything. But let me just show you, again, uh, up there at the top, that's the power button, and you can do a few things with that. Next, there's a home button there, and you rarely get prompted to do anything with the home button, but it's there. The button next to it, up there on that same row, is a cursor button, and you don't really use that much, but you can use it. And then the main part of the remote there has an up, down, left, and right button with an OK or select button right in the middle of that. Then right below those, there's a menu button and a return or a back button. And then the two buttons at the very bottom are a volume control buttons, and they don't do anything with the Geochron, so you can basically ignore those. But these are all the buttons you're going to be using while you're accessing the functions of the Geochron. But I can tell you the buttons you're going to use the most would be the menu button and the back button or the return button, and of course those buttons that are up, down, left, right, and the select button in the middle. Those are the main ones you're going to be using. So first, hit the menu button, and when you do, you're going to bring up the menu on the, on the right side of the screen. And then you'll start using the left, right, up, and down buttons to start accessing the different things that are on the menu. Obviously, when you get to that first tab marked General, you go down, and then you go uh, you know, to the left or right to select which map you want to use. Then there's the Layers button, and you can go down there and start adjusting the, the various layers that are available on the Geochron Atlas 4K. Then there's a, a tab that says Pins, and this is where you can add some custom points on the map. And it's pretty straightforward to do that. You just go down and uh, press the Add button, and then you can start uh, naming whatever the point is, and you can select whether or not to show the time on the map at that point. And then, of course, you set the latitude and longitude for that point so they show up on the map where you want them. Now, I'm just going to take a point here that I've already made, and I'll edit that point. When I go in and scroll down and click on the name of that point, it will bring up a virtual keyboard that will allow me to start renaming that, that point. So when I do that, I can either use the up, down, left, and right arrows to access the different uh, letters on the keyboard, and whenever I've got the letter I want, I press the OK button, and I just keep scrolling around that keyboard until I've entered all of the letters I want. And then when I'm done, I, I either hit uh, Enter or Submit though, over there on the right side to, you know, to leave that name in there and then move on from there. Now, this is another place where if I wanted to, I could use the Cursor button and give myself a cursor and then I, as I use the cursor, as I scroll around on the keyboard, it's got like a little hand pointing to things, so I can then uh, use that to point to whatever, I, whatever letter I want to select, and then I press the OK button. I think actually, just because using the cursor that way is a little bit squirrely, it seems like using, uh, instead of the cursor, just using it in the regular mode and clicking around seems easier to use because you know that, you know, one click moves you over one letter, whereas with the cursor you just kind of hold it down. You're not sure exactly how, how long to hold it down in order to move it around to where you want. But again, you have that option, and really this is the only time when the cursor is useful. Uh, other than that, uh, it really doesn't do anything. You can bring up the cursor, and you can have a pointer on the Geochron main map and move it around, but as you point to things, if you try to click on them, it really doesn't do anything. So, uh, again, that's just one of, the, one of the little features with the remote. 
Now I noticed something I found really impressive with this remote. When you first get it, you open it up and there's a little, well, I guess they call that a dongle inside, and you plug that into the side of the Geochron box. And then that's the interface between this remote and the Geochron Atlas 4K. Now, it's not an infrared remote. I mean, you know, with most of your remote controls for your video players and things, even your TV monitor, that you might have to get a direct line of sight and hold it up and point it directly at the thing you're trying to control. You know, if you were off like this, maybe it wouldn't work, or you're pointing the wrong direction, or, you know, I'm on this side of the room and I kind of have to hold my arm way out here in order to get the right aim you know, to hit the, the TV or whatever. With this, you don't have that problem. It's not infrared line of sight. In fact, you can point to just about any direction you want, up, down. You can even go in the next room and it'll still work. Now you won't be able to see what you're controlling at that point, but it's a, it's a great remote as far as that goes. So I decided, well, what's the range on this thing? You know, I, I, I went to, you know, the far end of the house, a couple rooms away, and it didn't, it didn't seem to work from there. But if I was just maybe one room away, it worked. I thought, well, what is the range? Let's say you're using this in some sort of a business situation, you know, big ballroom or something, and you, and you want to do some things with the remote. How far away can you be and still make it work? So I decided to go to a, a local building and set a monitor way, way down the hall and see how far away I could be with the remote and still have it work. So this is what I did. And I just kept getting farther and farther away until I actually ran out of hallway and I had to go outside by about 20 feet. And uh, after that, it didn't seem to work very well. So I measured exactly how far away this was from the Geochron Atlas 4K when I was 20 feet outside. And um, so I took my little measuring wheel and I went down there and measured it out. And it turned out to be 143 feet away. That's, that's pretty good. That's about, you know, about half a football field away and it still works. And so then I thought, well, you know, there, there, there's things inside a building that might uh, interfere with the ability of this to kind of reach out. And it, it, it does great already. But what, what if I had it just outside in the wide open? How well w would it work there? So I decided to move the TV completely outside and then walk away and, you know, take a few steps and try it and take a few more steps and try it and keep going until it got so far away that even though I could barely see the TV, especially out in the daylight like that, uh, I could still tell whether or not it was actually accessing menus when I pushed these buttons from a long way away. And, uh, well, I finally reached a point where it was becoming inconsistent and unreliable and I decided to, well, I decided to try a bunch of things from there, like, you know, point it in different directions and see if it still worked, try some strange poses, some trick shots, if you will, to see if it would really work from a long way away. And uh, yeah, it did okay. Again, from that was about the maximum distance I could be away in the uh, open outdoors and it still worked. This is something I would never practically ever need to do, but who knows? So got out my measuring wheel and decided to see how far away this was and turned out to be just a little more than 330 feet away. So that's more than a football field. That's uh, what, 110 yards? But it is nice to know that you don't have to worry about pointing it like that. You can just casually, you know, be whatever you want and it's still gonna work. Now, another thing I wanted to bring up that I didn't really go into detail before, but why not do it now, is uh, power options. So if you get into the menus, you can access the shutdown or the restart from the menus, but you can also uh, quickly go to those just by pressing this power button on the remote. So when you press the power button, a little box pops up and it has some options there. Sleep. And when you activate sleep, it's going to give you a countdown and it counts down about 30 seconds and then it sleeps. But actually it leaves a little bit of kind of a screensaver on the screen at that point. And um, yeah, then you can do whatever you want there. And the nice thing about this is that if you press the power button again, it will immediately bring the Geochron back on your screen. So if that seems to be the way you wanna do it to be able to bring it back immediately, then sleep might be a great option for you when you want to shut down the Geochron. Just make it sleep.
If you get into this countdown and you change your mind, you can start pressing buttons on the remote and that will actually cancel the countdown before it goes all the way down to zero and, and sleeps. So you've got that you can do. Now, uh, another thing you can do is we'll just shut the thing completely down. And so when you do that, it takes about two seconds before it's actually shut off. And when it's shut off, there's a little blue light on the box and it turns red and uh, you know the, the screen goes blank and then you know it's shut off. It takes about two seconds to power down. So that's a full shutdown. Now, when you do a full shutdown, pressing this power button won't do anything anymore. Nothing on the remote will affect the Geochron if it's been shut down that way, completely shut down. In order to restart it, there's a little power button right on the side. And if you push that, then it'll restart the Geochron at that point. As with any kind of computer, maybe you think it's getting a little buggy sometime, you might want to do a full reboot. And so one of your options on this power screen when you press the power button would be to restart the device. So then what, what this actually does is gives you that uh, couple seconds of shutting down all the way, followed by the complete restart. And uh, the, the full restart takes about a minute and 10 seconds. So if you are, you got the thing running and you get into the power menu there and you do a full restart, it gives you the two seconds of shutdown followed by the minute and 10 seconds of complete restart. So that entire sequence will take about a minute and 12 seconds. If you are restarting, let's say like a cold start, you know, it's been completely shut down and you're using that power button on the Geochron Atlas 4K to start it up, then that will only take a minute and 10 seconds to start up because you didn't have that two seconds of shutting down at that point. And another option you have from that little pop-up power menu is to just reload the program. So without completely shutting down the Geochron Atlas 4K computer, you're simply shutting down the Geochron software and restarting that. And if you do that, I timed it out to about 35 seconds from when you tell it to do that until the Geochron is completely restarted again as far as the software. You didn't shut down the whole device and do a full reboot. You just reloaded the software. And so um, that's something, again, if, if you've been playing with it all day, accessing a lot of menus, and for any reason you think it's getting, being a little sluggish or squirrely, or there's just something that you just kind of want to refresh the program, that's something you can do. And of course, if you think, well, it's getting super buggy, you can do the full restart. So of course, I like to, before any kind of computer device, before I unplug it or take it anywhere, do a complete shutdown which takes two seconds, and then you know that it's safe to unplug the power, unplug cables, anything like that. Another thing I think is worth noting is that the Geochron is optimized to work with 4K monitors, but will also work with HD monitors. So 4K, what is that? Uh, 3840 by 2160 resolution, okay, and then HD 1920 by 1080. So it works well with those, those resolutions. But the thing about uh, HDMI connections is that the device and the monitor are kind of talking back and forth to each other. So if the, if the Geochron Atlas 4K knows that the monitor is a 4K monitor, it's going to boot up in 4K resolution. If it knows that it's only an HD monitor, it's gonna boot up in that resolution. And some of the older monitors, especially maybe a smaller monitor, Monitors that are maybe 32 inches or lower, if it's a TV, uh, might be a 720p resolution monitor. So the Geochron Atlas 4K might boot up in 720 resolution. When it does that, uh, you know, the, the Geochron world map looks okay, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the text and the graphics are, are scaled in such a way so that you don't see the fine detail. So for example, I, I can show you what the clock on screen looks like in the 720 resolution versus the full uh, ultra high definition or 4K resolution. So there's quite a difference there. Or uh, like here's Australia and I've marked the city of Sydney on there so you can see the text. And uh, well, in 720 resolution, looks pretty rough, but if I restarted that and showed you the same thing in the full 4K resolution, and this is zoomed in, of course, to look at the detail, you can see that it looks much better. So uh, 720, you know, it, it, you might get that again on, on some of the older monitors, especially if they're smaller 
32 inches or smaller. Now, uh, all, another thing is the menus render a little bit differently uh, depending on whether you're in 4K or HD. And they're, they're totally usable in HD. But when it's hooked up and it's booted up in the 720 resolution, then the menus are not, not completely usable. So, <laughs> you know, when you go to select the map, they render out in a funny way that makes it hard to see all the maps that you could possibly select. And then some of the other selections are a little bit squirrely when you get into, uh, you know, the menus in that lower resolution. So it's, again, not recommended that you use this with a 720 monitor. If if you've set it up exactly like you want it and you have no need to go into the menus, then you can, you can hook it up to a 720 monitor and that's fine. But if you think you're going to need to access the menus, you know, there's a thing there. Also, I noticed when I go to enter, you know, those custom points on the map, uh, those pins, if you will, uh, the, the way the menu for that renders in HD, it kind of squishes some of the information, uh, you know, vertically and it actually makes it a little bit easier to see more lines that you can select so I, I i can go about 14 custom pins before if i tried to add another one it's actually down below the screen and i can't see what i'm selecting so you know it's not practical to to do any more than say 14 but if i'm in 4k because of the way that that menu renders i can only see about 10 lines so I guess that's okay. I mean, you don't want to clutter up the Geochron with lots of little custom pins all over, but if you can do 10 or 14, uh, maybe you can set it up on an HD monitor, get your 14 pins, and then uh, shut it down, put it on your 4K monitor, and you still have your 14 pins. But I found that's about the maximum I can do uh, and still see what I'm doing. I could probably do more, uh, but then I can't really type in the name and, you know, the, and the latitude and longitude like I would need to to make it come up right. Another thing about working with an older monitor, so I've got a, an old HD TV that's about 10 years old, and it's a 1080 resolution uh, picture on there. It's not 720, it's a, it's a full 1080 resolution. But uh, when, when the Geochron comes up, it's as though the very outer edge of what's rendered by the Geochron is kind of uh, outside of the picture. So like uh, along the top, you've got that time scale, which has two rows of numbers. The first row, the bottom row, is uh, numbers in circles. And the one above that is numbers that are not in circles. And those are showing you know, the, the daylight saving time adjustment one hour ahead. But on this older monitor, it's, it's cut off that top line. Now, part of that is older monitors are going to be more optimized for TV and maybe not for computers and TV, like some of the newer monitors. Also, they might have been optimized to show both high definition and standard definition TV. And there was a standard in standard definition TV that said that what was at the very edge of the picture was not considered essential visual information. So it gave you know the people that were making television programming uh, a little bit of a margin there that said, well, you know, maybe the TVs out there will see this very edge margin. Maybe they won't. So make sure that your essential information is within this margin. Well, that's not such a big deal anymore. This uh, They called it under scan. Uh, but now most of the newer monitors you get are going to show you all the way out to the edge, the very last pixel. But again, not too many years ago, um, there was just kind of that safe area that did not include the absolute edge of the picture. So I'm showing you right now what this looked like on my older HD monitor, where it cut that off. And I tried to get into some of the menu settings and adjust the picture to kind of squeeze that in. And, you know, with, depending on your, your monitor, there may be some adjustments for what's called underscan or uh, dot to dot or native resolution versus zoom. You know, there's a lot of little fiddly things you can get into the advanced settings of your monitor to try and fix that just in case you think that it's gonna show up mostly in that very top row. If you can't see both sets of numbers, the, the top and the second row there, then maybe get into the menus on your monitor and see if you can squeeze that in a little bit so you can see all the way absolutely out to the edge, then you'll be okay. 
Finally, I just wanted to show you that uh, one of the fun things about the Geochron Atlas 4K is that there, you do have that versatility. And again, you could hook it up to a, uh, a small 720p monitor all the way up to a 4K monitor. And so depending on what you have, you can have some fun with that. I kind of like the idea that instead of just having one size of Geochron, now I can have just about any size of Geochron. So here's a nice, uh, almost pocket-sized Geochron that I made simply by plugging it into a very small monitor that you could use for kind of field work when you're doing camera stuff. So that's fun. A little mini Geochron. I could keep it at my desk somewhere, you know, if I want to have fun with that. Or I happened to stumble upon a, a nice place where I could set up, I think, maybe the largest Geochron in the world. At least the largest one I'm aware of. If one of you, uh, smart Alex, <laughs> want to get a hold of one of these Geochrons and a nice projector and create an even bigger Geochron than this, you're welcome to it. But until I see that, I'm going to claim the record for having created the world's largest Geochron. I'm going to call it the Jumbocron. <laughs> and I'm going to have some fun with that. You know, you could say, well, look, now here's the uh, Analemma. And here are, here's the Terminator line. And here you can see that uh, North and South America are about as tall as I am on this wonderful Jumbocron. Uh, anyway, so as you can see, I'm having a good time with my Geochron. And uh, well, maybe now I've said absolutely everything there is to say about the Geochron Atlas 4K, and I will never speak about it again. Uh, probably not. Probably not. So anyway, keep keep watching, please. And thank you for watching now. And I do want to make some more fun episodes of the Good Timekeeping Show.